The contest. Why is rare earth technology so hard to replicate? Why are other countries struggling to catch up? Recently, the global tech community was once again abuzz with news. An Australian company made a high-profile announcement that it had successfully mastered heavy rare earth refining technology. Like a sudden clap of thunder, this news instantly made the already tense rare earth sector even more fraught with tension. When the news broke, everyone began speculating, could this be a turning point? Is China's leading position in rare earth refining technology about to be challenged? Today, we're going to dive deep into this. Is rare earth refining technology China's undisputed throne, or is it a coveted prize that other countries can share with enough effort? First, a quick primer for everyone. Despite the name Earth, rare earths are absolutely a hot commodity in the industrial world, known as industrial vitamins. From the smartphones and computers in our hands to space shuttles and missiles, all rely on rare earths. And in the entire rare earth supply chain, refining technology is the core of the core, with a very high technical barrier, like an insurmountable mountain. This naturally makes people curious, what unique advantages, the right time, place, and people, have allowed China to pull so far ahead? And what formidable challenges do other countries have to overcome to catch up? Don't worry, we'll get into the details below. How did China pull so far ahead in rare earth refining technology? China's ability to dominate the global rare earth refining scene isn't just about luck, it's the result of decades of persistent, hard work. In the last century, the global rare earth market was controlled by old industrial powers in the US and Europe. At that time, China was a nobody in the rare earth field. But our older generation of scientists refused to give up. Academicians like Su Guangxian led a team and plunged into the research of rare earth separation technology. At that time, foreign countries imposed a technology blockade and didn't provide any information, so the research conditions were incredibly difficult. But it was in this environment that they developed the cascading extraction theory which increased rare earth separation efficiency several times over. It was like putting a turbocharger on China's rare earth industry. From then on, China's rare earth refining technology took off. Targeting the heavy in the south, light in the north distribution of rare earth ores in the country, a series of targeted technologies were developed. The Bayan OBO mine in the north is the world's largest light rare earth mine but it's a polymetallic coexisting deposit with a very complex composition, making smelting extremely difficult. It was internationally recognized as a tough nut to crack. After countless experiments, Chinese researchers developed the third-generation sulfuric acid smelting and separation technology, which was not only low-cost and large-scale but also enabled continuous production. Later, to solve the problem of sulfuric acid wastewater being difficult to recycle and calcium sulfate scaling, they developed a new process for purifying rare earths using the magnesium bicarbonate method. This new process was astonishingly effective. The rare earth extraction rate reached over 99%, with a purity greater than 99.99%. It also achieved the recycling of water, magnesium, and carbon dioxide resources, and the troublesome problem of calcium sulfate scaling was solved. The workers were thrilled, as they used to spend a lot of effort cleaning calcium sulfate scaling every month, but now they only have to do it once or twice a year. And then there are the ion adsorption rare earth deposits in the south, which are rich in precious medium and heavy rare earths, crucial for national defense, new generation information technology, and other fields. But their extraction and separation are also challenging. The traditional in-situ ammonium sulfate leaching, ammonium bicarbonate precipitation enrichment process is cumbersome, has a low recovery rate, and causes serious ammonia nitrogen pollution. Chinese scientists once again took on the challenge and developed a new integrated in-situ leaching and extraction process for ion adsorption rare earth ores. This new process is incredible, it replaces traditional ammonium sulfate leaching with an eco-friendly magnesium salt composite system and uses a non-equilibrium centrifugal extraction process to enrich rare earths, replacing the traditional precipitation enrichment process. This streamlined the process by five steps, increased the rare earth recovery rate by 10% to 20%, and crucially, eliminated ammonia nitrogen pollution at the source and the radioactive waste residue. In 2016, 
a mine owned by China Aluminum Guangxi Rare Earth Company adopted this technology, achieving the first industrial application of direct extraction and enrichment of low-concentration leachates from ion adsorption rare earth ores. The extraction and recovery rate of medium and heavy rare earths reached over 99%. Experts who evaluated the results unanimously agreed that this was a major revolution in the production process of ion adsorption rare earth ores, with its overall level leading the world in rare earth metal beneficiation, smelting, and separation technology. China's leadership in rare earth refining technology isn't just about a breakthrough in one or two technologies, it's about the comprehensive lead of the entire technical system. From mining and beneficiation to smelting, separation, and final product purification, every step has its own core technology. Moreover, after so many years of development, a complete supply chain has been formed, with each link working closely together and innovating collaboratively. This is like a relay race where every one of China's runners is exceptionally strong, and the baton handoff is perfectly coordinated, making it hard not to win. Other countries wanting to catch up can't just introduce one or two technologies and hire a few experts. They have to start from basic research and build their own technical system and supply chain step by step. You can imagine the difficulty. Do other countries have a chance to catch up? Let's turn our attention to other countries and see how their race to catch up with China and rare earth refining technology is going. The United States as a global technological powerhouse, is naturally unwilling to fall behind in the rare earth sector. It has abundant rare earth resources, like the Mountain Pass Mine, which is one of the largest rare earth mines in the world. Logically, having the ore should give them confidence, but the gap between the US and China in rare earth refining technology is significant. The US rare earth industry was actually quite glorious before the 1990s with most of the world's rare earth supply coming from the U.S. However, due to environmental pressure, rising costs, and other reasons, the U.S. gradually moved its rare earth mining and refining operations abroad, and the domestic industry slowly withered. When it realized the strategic importance of rare earths in recent years, it found that a huge gap had opened up with China. To catch up with China, the U.S. government has invested a lot of money to encourage companies and research institutions to conduct rare earth refining technology research. For example, the U.S. Department of Defense has funded some projects, hoping to develop advanced rare earth separation technologies. The U.S. has also actively courted allies, trying to establish a rare earth supply chain that is not dependent on China. Australia's Linus Corporation, for example, has received strong support from the U.S. government. Linus's factory in Malaysia recently announced that it had successfully refined heavy rare earth dysprosium oxide, which gave the U.S. a glimmer of hope. But in reality, Linus's technology still has a lot of room for improvement compared to China's. In terms of output, China separates 10,000 to 15,000 tons of heavy rare earths per year while Linus's planned future output is a mere 1,500 tons, a difference of 10 times. In terms of cost and price, China's export price for dysprosium oxide rare earth is $4 to $7 per kilogram, while Linus's selling price is as high as $10 to $15, a minimum difference of two times. This means that even if Linus can produce consistently, it will be very difficult to compete with Chinese products on the market. European countries also face huge challenges in rare earth refining technology. Although Europe has some rare earth resources, the reserves are limited and scattered, and the mining cost is high. In terms of technology R&D, European countries are fighting their own battles, lacking unified planning and coordination. Although some countries have some technological accumulation in certain areas, there is still a long way to go to form a complete technical system that can compete with China. For example, France has some research results in rare earth permanent magnets, but in the upstream rare earth refining sector, it appears powerless compared to China. Germany is strong in the industrial manufacturing sector, but it is also still trying to catch up in rare earth refining technology. For Europe to achieve a breakthrough in rare earth refining technology, it must not only increase capital investment but also integrate the resources of various countries and strengthen cooperation and collaborative innovation. Japan's efforts in the rare earth sector should not be ignored. Japan itself has a scarcity of rare earth resources and relies almost entirely on imports, 
a large part of which comes from China. To break its dependence on Chinese rare earths, Japan is actively looking for overseas rare earth resources, such as investing in rare earth projects in Australia and Brazil, while also increasing investment in rare earth refining technology R&D. Japan is also trying to recover rare earths from electronic waste and has made some technological innovations in this area. But overall, the gap between Japan and China in rare earth refining technology is still significant. From resource acquisition to technology R&D to industrial support, Japan faces many difficulties. Moreover, Japan's scale in the rare earth supply chain is relatively small, making it difficult to form the kind of industrial synergy that China has. Other countries want to catch up with China's rare earth refining technology and have the determination in action, but they face many difficulties. Technology R&D requires long-term accumulation and a large amount of capital investment. In this process, it also needs the support of a complete supply chain and industrial ecosystem. China's decades of hard work in the rare earth sector have formed deep technological barriers and industrial advantages, and it is extremely difficult for other countries to achieve a breakthrough in a short period of time. What are the deeper issues behind the rare earth technology competition? Let's take a deeper look at the series of profound issues behind this rare earth refining technology competition. First, from the perspective of the global supply chain, China's leadership in rare earth refining technology has made China the core of the global rare earth supply chain. For other countries to break away from their dependence on China and build their own supply chains, it's not just a technical issue, it also involves considerations of industrial layout, supply chain security, and more. Take the US, for example. Although the US has rare earth mines, if the mined ore is not refined domestically, it needs to be shipped to other countries for processing, which involves many uncertainties such as transportation costs and trade policies. And building a complete rare earth refining supply chain in the US requires not only a huge capital investment but also faces problems such as environmental approvals and high labor costs. This has led to the slow progress of the US in building its rare earth supply chain. From an environmental perspective, the rare earth refining process is often accompanied by environmental pollution problems. Traditional rare earth refining technology generates a large amount of wastewater, waste residue, and waste gas, causing serious damage to the environment. China also faced such problems during its past development. However, in recent years, China has increased its investment in environmental technology R&D and developed a series of green and eco-friendly rare earth refining technologies, such as the previously mentioned magnesium bicarbonate method and the integrated in situ leaching and extraction process for ion adsorption rare earth ores. While improving resource utilization, these technologies have greatly reduced environmental pollution. Other countries, in their pursuit of catching up with China's rare earth refining technology, must also pay attention to environmental issues. If they use outdated, high-polluting technologies, although costs may be reduced in the short term, they will face huge environmental and social pressure in the long run. From an international political perspective, as a strategic resource, the technological competition behind rare earths is often intertwined with international political maneuvering. In recent years, with changes in the global geopolitical landscape, the strategic value of rare earths has become increasingly prominent. Some countries are trying to enhance their voice on the international political stage by controlling rare earth resources and technology. As the world's largest producer and exporter of rare earths, every move China makes in this field is under international scrutiny. China's move to strengthen rare earth export controls is partly out of a desire to protect its domestic resources and environment, and partly to safeguard its strategic interests in international political games. For other countries to break China's advantage in the rare earth sector, it is not just a technological competition. They also need to use diplomatic means and international cooperation on the international political stage to gain more resources and support. Behind the rare earth refining technology competition, there are many profound issues, including global supply chain restructuring, environmental protection, and international political maneuvering. This is not just a technical race but a comprehensive competition involving economic, social, and environmental aspects. How will the future of rare earth refining technology impact global scientific and technological development?
let's look ahead and see how the future of rare earth refining technology will affect global scientific and technological development. With the rapid development of global technology, the demand for rare earths will only increase. Emerging industries such as new energy vehicles, wind power generation, and 5G communication all rely on the support of rare earths. If China can continue to maintain its leading position in rare earth refining technology, constantly innovating and developing more efficient and eco-friendly technologies, then China will occupy a more important position in the development of global emerging industries. China can leverage its technological and resource advantages to provide a stable supply of rare earths for global emerging industries and promote their rapid development. From another perspective, if other countries can make significant breakthroughs in rare earth refining technology, narrowing the gap with China or even surpassing it, the global rare earth industry landscape will undergo major changes. This could lead to more intense market competition, driving down the price of rare earth products, thereby reducing the production costs of emerging industries and promoting faster global technological development. However, it could also trigger new geopolitical conflicts and trade frictions, as countries' competition for rare earth resources and technology will become more intense. The future of rare earth refining technology is crucial for global scientific and technological development. Whether China continues to lead or other countries catch up, all countries need to strengthen cooperation in technology R&D, resource protection, and environmental protection to jointly promote the sustainable development of the rare earth industry and contribute to global scientific and technological progress. In this rare earth refining technology war without smoke, China, with its years of accumulation and unremitting innovation, temporarily holds the leading position. But other countries are also catching up. The final outcome of this race is still full of uncertainty. As members of the community that follows technological development, let's keep an eye on this technological contest and see what amazing changes will happen in the future of the rare earth refining technology field. Remember to like and follow, and let's witness the miracle of technology together.